Hello my Soka universe. Well, I'm fully in international mode, but I think the topic of this video applies not only to um, international soccer, but also club soccer. But it is now motivated by uh, the Ireland Portugal game yesterday, which got me thinking, uh, we're not talking much about the game, but it was an awful jersey matchup. And we gotta get into it. It got me thinking, um, you know, these are things that can be avoided. And also, uh, what would be key rules? And I've been thinking about a video like that for a whole lot. What would be key rules that I would like to see? Because I have to say, some of the ones that UEFA and FIFA have are just. I know the intention behind it, but um, it is not the game anymore that I, I like to see in many ways. Uh, I was particularly uh, non happy with, for instance, how the European. Uh, the Euros final uh, was played that Italy and England could not play in their traditional looks. Have we seen England? I think we've seen once England in a traditional look. So, you know, uh, those things. So, here are seven rules that I would like to see. And yeah, I leave it up for discussion. The first one, this is my pet peeve. I want that teams preserve their traditional look. Let's take it on the national team side. Um, Brazil is not messing with their look. Yellow, blue, white. Sometimes there are blue socks down there, which already is um, a little bit of a, a bone of contention for, for, for me. But the, uh, the yellow, blue, white, they typically do not mess. Even when uh, Nike went all out in 2016, Brazil was the one team that did not. They did not have an all yellow white look. No, they had. They maintained their look. So uh, I want this for most national teams. There is absolutely no reason why Italy, who classically always played in blue, white, blue, why they shouldn't continue playing like that, especially uh, against uh, teams that play in the red and white. I personally think that pants clashes are not that important. The only exception is, and I totally understand it, um, if you have um, red, white, red against white, red, white, or the same thing for blue, that is one that you might want to avoid. But other than that, preserve the traditional look as, as, as much as possible. I miss France playing in traditional tricolor look. For me, the the two best jersey matchups at the World Cup uh, have always been uh, watch any Italy Brazil game or watch any Italy France the traditional games. They look awesome because the uh, colors of, of Brazil match so well with the traditional uh, blue, white, and whatever uh, socks they have on the bottom. So I would say preserve the traditional look as much as possible for a home look and allow those clashes. I think an uh, Italy, uh, Italy against Spain is another one of those, those examples. I think at the Euro, Euros, I mean, uh, at, at, at Euros, it's absolutely a mess. Italy against Spain, uh, I, I, I remember in 2012, uh, in 2008, they played red against white. Then at, at, in Euro 2012, they went traditional looks against each other. It looked beautiful. And there was no reason whatsoever. I mean, I understand that for Italy, um, they had uh, the away uh, the away set had dark blue shorts, but the home shorts didn't have that. It could have worked just fine. Red against blue is a beautiful matchup. Okay, so this is my, uh, rule number one, and uh, goes also for the club game. I don't want to see, uh, although I, saw the, I don't want to see Milan, for instance, with black pants, uh, or you know, any other teams that uh, go with a unique color, color, color look. You have a traditional look, uh, stick to that look. You don't need to alter that. I'm just trying to think of a team that uh, has been messing around, but uh, I cannot find now one on the, off the top of my head. But this unicolored uh, look, and I'm looking especially at France and Italy in this case, this has to stop. Me not like it. But number two, uh, for the alternate shirts, there needs to be contrasting sets, two contrasting sets that are potentially all unicolored. And I would uh, go as far as to say that, potentially unicolored, that one set needs to be either all white or all yellow depending on uh, what team you are uh, playing. And another one needs to be um, all dark, meaning blue or black. Maybe a dark red can work. 
but I think blue or black or uh, this is one uh, thing that I that should be in, in, in instituted. So to cover all color clashes. Now, uh, this means if you Brazil your hair have have a yellow shirt, you have a blue away, then you can have then you can actually experiment with a third shirt. But the third alternative needs to be available. Uh, I'll keep it for now uh, mostly in the international soccer um, because uh, it's. You know, uh, those are looks that we all can <laughs> more easily access. So uh, Brazil, I think, is fine. And Brazil can probably live with two uh, looks a whole long time. But I'm thinking, uh, you know, what Italy did with their wonderful two 2009 sets. You had the blue one, you had the white one. Um, and then you had uh, the green one, which, of, of course, was only worn in one game. Austria uh, is, 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 you know, I mean, it's, a, it's almost a perfect set. You have... Uh, the red one for home, although it should be white. Then you have a white and then you have black. Uh, those three colors will cover every opportunity. So this is one thing I've, I would like, like, like to see. Uh, whether you choose yellow or white depends, I think, largely on your color scheme. Um, I would say for uh, France, for instance, uh, I, uh, a yellow would look weird. For Spain, I actually think, uh, although this white one with the Spanish flag color colors look nice, I think for Spain a yellow one would look quite good. Spain is another one that actually has it uh, overall quite well covered. They have red, they have usually the, a navy, and then they have white. Um, and I, I would say that if they would have a yellow one, that would be uh, would look even better. But that's my personal opinion. Number three goes all in there, and this is Gordon Baker. No all green looks. No all green looks. Serie A is right. Have you seen? I mean, you have seen it maybe on my uh, posts uh, dur during the Ireland-Portugal game, which I had on the second screen. You could not see Ireland. It was Portugal playing against ghosts. I fully understood the moment that Serie A announced the ban on green shirts. I fully understood they do not want to have all green looks. Mostly... I think because of green screen rules, uh, because you know uh, it is very hard if you wanna project like commercials onto the pitch or whatever you wanna project on there. Uh, it is really hard to do this with green shirts. Now they said, uh, of course, the Sassuolo can keep it because this is green augmented with black. And I'm not saying green kids should be banned. Ireland, it's a beautiful green, and uh, Ireland should always play in green, but with white pants. And potentially orange socks. We can discuss those. But uh, there needs to be a li an element in there that actually distinguishes the kids from the grass. And it has been. Uh, it came to me when I was, um, you know, there is this uh, website hockey by design. It's N N NHL kids where they say um, you. They say, you know, there was this all white look once of the Toronto ma Maple Leafs against a white background. You don't see it. But he also also said avoid black because then you have white and black and the uh, team predominantly playing in white with some color. Then against uh, black makes it un unappealing. And, and I was thinking, yeah, all white look in hockey does not make sense. And all green look in soccer does not make any sense whatsoever. I'm again, I'm not against the color of green. But there should be uh, sufficiently other colors added onto a green shirt. You cannot go like Ireland, all green. It don't understand it. I don't un un understand it. I watched uh, highlights uh, then of this uh, game on a bigger screen. Okay, there I can see it. But on the smaller screen, it looked like uh, Portugal playing ghosts. So, totally. Ban on all green kids. Number four. Uh... When you make a design or when you choose your colors, you need to take all potential clashes into account. This is now especially for leagues. It cannot be, or uh, even uh, at the 2014 World Cup, it, can, it cannot be that Spain releases a dark red shirt and a black shirt, and then they play against the Netherlands, and they need to suddenly come, come, come up with a white shirt. No. You need to think about these things. Don't make it all splishy. That's why you, you have already three choices, and some have even four. Take everything into account. I also think I, I think it was was in Premier League where Leeds had to come 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 with this uh, burgundy maroon kit uh, two seasons ago, uh, last season uh, when 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 they were once playing away. So 
you need to think when you design not what might you yes you might want to sell but uh the first thing is who are my potential opponents and i know at the designing stage it's not quite quite clear who will get promoted however i do think one can make an educated guess you know what teams you're playing against and if there are many red and white teams then you need to have at least a blue or whatever alternative in there it is so obvious it should not be done also please look at the kit rules and don't release something that doesn't apply to kit rules of looking at you france 2016 the way short okay uh number uh, five i also think that kits should be interchangeable i hate nothing more i mean there there is a certain aesthetic that gets lost to me when you cannot just take uh the pants of the away kit and match it with the home kit to make a better look or i would rather prefer the other way around uh keep it all interchangeable it seems so obvious yet it is so hard to do think about these things think what 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 you can do uh and have it that way it would make my for much in many cases for much more pleasant viewing experience i think uh this is museum of jerseys uh and i totally agree with them one of the best kids uh best kids kids sets ever was the roma 2000 2001 title winning conquer campaign where they were all in this new uh kappa template but they all they had the you had the classic look of roma in red white black then you had a um, uh, white red white kit. Then you had an all black kit. Uh, you could have red socks with it. So you can you could mix and match, and it all made sense, and it, all kits looked beautiful. I think it was not black; it was actually dark blue back then. But you know, you know where I'm getting it. So uh, it was all really, really well, well done. So interchangeability, uh, especially on a national team level, I think at the club level, I'm uh, willing to be a little bit more lenient but especially on national team level interchangeability should always be a given always yes always <laughs> okay number six uh this is now something that uh is that annoys me with kids uh, or judges uh, ju for uh, quite a while uh you get these super pattern shirts uh, or you know the striped shirts on the front that have done a plain back because of the name and the number that is not a way to go let me show you a way to go number one I'll show you two ways to go if you have like argentina two light colors in your stripes keep the stripes on the on on the back but you could just make like this shirt a little box and put a dark number on there although i think for this argentina shirt it would be just fine to keep it striped and have the number on there so this is actually a bad example, but I was thinking about that here. Just the plain number would be just fine. However, I think the best way, Milan is a great example of a team that uh, has two darkish uh, stripes with black and red. They hardly ever use a box only in the 2000s. They had to use for because UEFA demanded it that the numbers are in the box. Not necessary. Perfect contrast. However, if you do have a high contrast, between your stripes like Juventus here's already your solution but it's even better here I think this is a beautiful beautiful look you have your square you put the number in there you can make a circle or whatever this is a proper way of app, uh, applying not the modern way we have here a huge either white or black blank and then on the bottom there's a little bit of striping this looks ridiculous absolutely ridiculous something that I don't want to see it is not aesthetically pleasing I know it's easy to manufacture, but you know, how hard can it be to make such a box? It's a print. You don't need to make panels or whatever. So uh, for me, this is a, another big pet peeve of, of mine. If you have a pattern on the front, also have the pattern on the back. I don't want to have shirts that look front and back differently. I just don't. It's It looks ridiculous. I mean, and I think Nike is also, also to blame with their 2016 range where basically you had a shirt and then you have the front panel that gives the design and the rest is kind of uh, plain stuff. No, thank you. Don't want to have that. So this is uh, number six. Uh, I could think of a few more, but I want to say uh, number seven. This is what I really, really want to see as well. Uh, I am tired 
of having new designs every every season. Yes, it gives me something to, to, to review, something to look out for, but it becomes literally, uh, you know, if I look at just kits from two seasons ago, ah, those they were wearing, those actually looked nice. Or, you know, there is uh, this, uh, you lose track very quickly. Kits should last at least two seasons. I know commercial, this is not viable. However, in America, I, I know the NFL, they keep kids for five years, five full seasons. To me, there is no, no real reason except a commercial one to issue kids bang, 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 bang uh, every year. And then you have fourth kids and fifth kids and so on. And it gets all a little bit too much. The whole um, visual identity is watered down. And a quick add on to the last rule is, of course, um, with special kits like third kits or if you have you, uh, third kits I think you should only worn in uh, uh, proper clash but what more you can release of course a special kit but it can you can only do so and wear it like two times a season so these are seven rules that I would like to see instated at some point uh, let me know what you think, uh, with which rules you uh, disagree or, uh, or agree. Uh, I would love to hear from you on that. Um, and if there are other things, I mean, I could think about a few a few more, but maybe I'll, I'm thinking of discussing a few of these with other people as well and maybe post that. So let's see if I will ever get to do something like it. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day.